talk about hearing your own voice as an artist and um, some things, some techniques you can use for self-discovery, um, learning how you want to paint. Maybe you've tried painting in the past and you're just coming back to it and um, kind of exploring what you, you know, why are you watching this today? What do you like about what you found in yourself? And um, what do you want to change technique wise? Um, so the first thing when I, when I talk to people and I, I talk to a lot of, um, a lot of people that have studied with me have art degrees, um, or, and maybe not, but, um, most of them have, have painting experience and they're wanting to get back into it. Um, there are some that have a lot of knowledge about art history and love art, collect art, and they're kind of, um, timidly putting their toe into making it themselves. So um, whatever camp you fall in, welcome. Maybe you're just someone just like me and it's just fun to talk about. Um, but uh, uh, the thing that I, the, the thing that I have, I feel like I've discovered or not necessarily discovered, but found to be true for myself is that I really like um, art that looks like the sort of things that come out of me. Um, and what I mean by that is that even before I started um, painting and um, yeah, I guess even as a child, I guess I could say that even as a child and certainly before I had any maturity as, as uh, expressing myself as a painter, then I liked artwork that I um, uncannily ended up painting like. So I think there is something intuitive um, about what we like and what might be inside of us as an artist. We have uh, subjects, we have certainly inclinations to paint certain kinds of things, whether that's plein air landscapes, whether that's um, paintings of people, portraits, figures, still lives, um, abstract. We have concepts of things that, that, we, that pull us when we see them in wherever, art museums, galleries, books, online. And um, I tell, I've, I've always said, I've always told people that work with me that painting, whatever you choose to paint or draw is half or more than half of the finished piece. So the subject is incredibly important. Um, I don't think, you know, you'll, you'll just kind of, you, I, I guess this is about style. Um, I think the creation of style or the the comprehension of what your innate style is largely rests upon what you choose to depict like what are you drawn to so that's a huge thing so the first exercise is basically clipping images um, pinterest is a great place you can make a pinterest board or boards of art that you love um, if you want to do it analog and have like a, a cork board on your wall this is my old one. This is like predates um, heavy computer use. Like I, I have Pinterest um, that I use a lot now. But like this is an old an old file that I have, um, and I have various things. I have um, things pulled from magazines. I have um, photographs. Um, you can see this is just art inspiration. Um, whew, well, there we go. <laughs> it's a big mess. Anyway, um, poems are in here as well. I'll just drop this. Um, so I recommend that as a very helpful exercise, and you might find that there uh, that there is a cohesion in what you collect. Um, so remember that that you may gravitate. There's kind of like a narcissism in art, where I think that you almost like you like art that looks like something that you might have made. Um, uh, I don't know. I'm interested in people's differing ideas, but for me, this has certainly been true. And yeah, I don't know. I just think it's at least a helpful part of an exercise. So collect um, pieces that you admire or subjects that you admire. Um, that's the first step. Um, the second step would be to, if you have experience as, a, as an artist, then to spend some time, um, pull out five pieces or, or whatever you can 
um, three to five pieces and really spend time looking at them. Really think about uh, what it is that you are happy with and what it is that you're unhappy with. Um, yeah, I guess that, that's, I guess, you, you know, you're still exploring and I, I believe everyone should keep learning. Um, so this is a really great exercise to kind of spend some time and think of it in terms of the technical and also the emotional aspects or, you know, or kind of broader stylistic things like, what do you like about it? What don't you like about it? What do you feel shy? Like, are, you know, are you shy showing people? Um, and why might that be? Um, what do you feel like your needs are? Um, like, how can you, what tools can help you feel more confident about what you've produced? Um, and then lastly, sharing this, like if you're going to write along here um, and check back with me and engage, and I'd love to hear from you. I seriously, really, um, I really like helping people because um, it's very fulfilling to see you unlock your potential and um, find what's inside you. And people are generally capable of, of more than they know um, from my experience. And it's really, um, it's an honor actually to be part of someone's journey um, to feeling better about themselves and putting out something in the world that's, that's beautiful. Um, okay, so... Um, oh, last, I know I was forgetting something last. Um, so, so far we have make a kind of like mood boards, um, clip pictures of things you like. Second, spend time in front of three to five pieces, bring some out of your own work, analyze what you like from a technical and more emotional aspect about things that you've already done. Um, come up with ideas of where you want to go. And then, um, lastly, uh, um, try to articulate um, why you want to make art. Um, what is it that motivates you? And be honest about it. Um, yeah, just be honest with yourself. That, that part you don't have to share, but I think it's a useful exercise. Um, for me, in short, it is... Um, I always felt like um, making art was a compulsion, so... Um, you know, kind of like it wasn't like it was super cerebral where I decided to do to do to paint for a for a very definite reason. But but it is completely true that my entire life, um, it is the bittersweet qualities in life. Um, and painting, um, well, art making is how I, um, I process those feelings. Um, those the poignancy of life. Um, I'm a very sensitive person. Um, so that was kind of how I dealt with intense fear, um, and concern for the small and the weak, <laughs> I guess, basically. Um, I'm a real animal lover, for example, and as a child, it was just very difficult to process, um, um, harming, harm of what I perceived as innocence. So, um, the poignancy of life is what I am processing as I paint. And of course, this is certainly not conscious with every painting, but if I put everything together, um, it is really taking time to honor the brevity, um, the brevity, the wonderfulness in our short lives. I guess that could be how a good way to say it. So it's not really like super morbid, but it is um, certainly not ignoring um, the element of time. Um, thank you. I hope this was helpful in some way, and I hope to hear back from you. I'd love it if you share, even privately, if you want to send me a message. Um, I'd like to see kind of where you're going and um, hear, hear if this helped at all. Thanks.